The question is that the House do now adjourn. The member for Holt has the call. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, I rise tonight to raise with the House the issue of uh, political and um, civil disenfranchisement and disengagement. It's been evident for some time that many in our community are despairing at the, at the situation of politics and, in many cases, the state of our society. The essence of the heart of the disconnection is the manner of political and civil discourse and the feelings of irrelevance and disempowerment. It is ironic, given the legislation that's been passed through the House and the legislative and policy debates that we have in this place, many extremely significant, that many Australians see us as no more than schoolchildren and this place a schoolyard. The result is a sense of profound dis um, disaffection and disconnection. And this is mirrored in people's dealings with bureaucratic and, uh, and some businesses in the community as well. More and more of my constituents have become disaffected. Additionally, in the outer suburbs where governments constantly struggle to provide the social infrastructure that is needed, many are turning away from community and civic engagement. For example, how can one person make a difference? What's the point? My voice isn't being heard. These are recurrent reactions and key indicators of why we should be concerned. It's true that many people are closely watching events occurring in Europe, nervous that it portends another global financial crisis. It's also true that many people have seen headline job losses in manufacturing and financial services here in Australia, whilst many small businesses in my electorate are reporting recession-like conditions. It's natural during these uncertain and difficult times to turn inwards and disengage but in reality, we can only succeed as a community and as a civil society by engagement. The costs of disengagement are too evident. At the same time, the trend in my area is exacerbated by media reportage that depicts suburbs in my electorate of Holt as some of the most unlivable in Melbourne, which is pretty interesting considering I live in one of them. Compounding this is the focus on negative events that find their way into the front pages of our papers down our way in suburbs such as Dufton, Hallam, Narry, Warren and Cranbourne. These, uh, but when you have great stories about people such as a young boy in my lecture who raised $3,000 and shaved his head in order to raise money to provide treatment for a woman with leukaemia and the contribution the community are put forward, they're very rarely reported in the national, the local, broader media. There's a key national component about us, a key national character, characteristic, which is we pull together in times of crisis, whether it be flood, whether it be bushfires, hurricanes or drought, we always pull together for the common good. And so in, uh, perhaps a way forward is to look at examples within our local community of people that actually literally transform our community and transform the lives of those in our community to encourage this civil, this civil and political engagement. One of the best examples that I can put forward in this place is a person named Stephen Hallett, a friend of mine. Now Stephen's played an instrumental role in the establishment, management, development and maintenance of Frog Hollow Reserve in Endeavour Hills and the Friends of Frog Hollow, which was established in late 2002. The Friends of Frog Hollow have a passionate interest in the management of this reserve and have done great work to improve the environment and to protect local frog species in the reserve. The Friends of Frog Hollow started as a typical friends group with a large number of members, but they wanted to be active. They wanted to contribute to the change and the development of the, the, um, of the, the landscape around them. Through Stephen Hallett's leadership, the group has fundamentally transformed Frog Hollow Reserve, obtaining more than $50,000 in grants for the revegetation, which has seen the group plant more than 60,000 native trees, shrubs and grasses. The group has also excavated and laid more than 300 metres of crushed gravel walking paths around the wetland ponds. Apart from the basic activities of spreading mulch, what they also do in planting native trees, Friends of Frog Hollow have conducted many successful community events including National Tree Day and Clean Up Australia Day every year since their formation, and a spring pl a planting festival with the City of Casey, which is one of only six major events in the state. I'm looking forward to attending their next event this uh, Sunday, which is the Clean Up Australia Day, and to help this important community area at Frog Hollow Reserve. This group, as I said, is literally transforming their community. A vision that the group had for about eight years is to link the amazing Listerfield Park with Frog Hollow Reserve. So in effect, what you could do if you could do that is ride from Listerfield Park or walk from Frog Hollow to the bay. Um, it's just amazing what a small group of people can do if they put their mind to it. Um, as former uh, US President Franklin Delano Roosevelt famously said, happiness lies not in the mere possession of money, it lies in the joy of achievement and the thrill of creative effort. Well, all I can say is looking at the people from Frog Hollow Reserve and Stephen Hallett, 
That's what they're literally doing. They're transforming their community, bringing happiness to the community, and they're coming together the for the common good. The member's time has expired.